the Santa Rosa plum tree is just loaded down with fruits this year. There's at least a couple hundred on this tree. The Black Beauty Mulberry also is putting off nice little berry clusters all over the place. I got a few of these last year. They were absolutely delicious. So looking forward to a harvest. Anyway, today I want to share with you five nitrogen fixing edible plants that I'm growing back here that you might want to consider growing yourself. So the first plant I'll be sharing with you today that's edible and a nitrogen fixer is the wisteria known botanically as Wisteria sinensis. Now this is a deciduous plant, meaning it's gonna drop all its leaves and foliage in the winter, but come spring, it'll be one of the first to bloom, producing these beautiful lavender flowers, and it's the petals of the flower that are edible. Now the rest of the plant can be toxic, so you wanna be careful, but the petals of this plant can be picked off and eaten raw, sprinkled atop a salad, or you can cook with it. Put it in soup, stews, make fritters out of them. Very versatile, beautiful plant. Now, a word of caution is the wisteria can really take off and take over. They can get humongous, growing 25 feet plus. But the good news is you can easily prune these back and shape them to fit into your landscape. And when you do prune them back, what ends up happening is some of the roots that were there prior to the pruning die back as they're no longer needed to support such a large shrub. And in doing so, the nitrogen nodules on the roots drop off, helping to feed surrounding plants in the area. Now the wisteria likes water, but it's also drought tolerant. And these plants will grow a long time, 100 plus years in fact. So get one in the ground and enjoy it for the rest of your life. The next plant I want to share with you today is the autumn olive, known botanically as Eliagnus umbellata. Now this is a young specimen here. This is just a couple years old. But these plants will get rather large, 12 to 15 feet, which makes them not just ornamental, but a good windbreak. Now, just like the wisteria, they are deciduous, so they'll lose all their leaves if you are trying to use it as a privacy hedge. But the great thing about these is that they're self-fertile. Now, having several different varieties in your garden are going to help create even a more denser fruit set, but just one is all it takes, and you'll have the benefit of the fruit and the benefit of the nitrogen fixation. Once again, it's the nitrogen nodules on this plant that help feed itself and the surrounding plants. So it's the berries that this plant will produce that are edible, and the seeds inside the berry are also edible. And besides just eating the berries, you can make jams, sauces, smoothies, pies, even a fruit leather. That's where you blend up the berries and put it on a food dehydrator and turn it into a fruit roll-up. This plant is drought tolerant. So I've got several of these planted out in the garden. I'd highly recommend you look into this. By the way, here's the longevity spinach that I've been growing out here the last few years. And as you can see, it's coming back once again as a perennial. Next up, we got the sea berry shrub, known botanically as Hippophae rhamnoids. Now, I've got four of these females throughout the garden, and I've got one male plant. You're going to want at least one male for every eight female specimens so that you can have the cross-pollination and get a nice fruit set. These will get generally about six to ten feet tall. They can be grown as an ornamental with their silvery green, grayish leaves. They're drought tolerant. And once mature, they'll put off these clusters of orange berries in abundance that you can eat raw, juice them, put them in your smoothies, make a fruit leather, pies, even alcohol, just like with the autumn olive. And once again, just like the other plants, it's the nitrogen root nodules that develop on this plant that help to feed itself and the surrounding plants. Overall, just a wonderful plant to add into your landscape. Next up, we got the fava bean, known botanically as Vasia faba. Now this is one of the oldest cultivated plants known to man. They get about three to four feet tall, and after they flower, they produce these pods, which when young can be eaten raw, and once mature, they're shelled and cooked or fried. You can also eat the leaves, the tips, the flowers, and if you're looking for nitrogen fixation with this plant, you actually want to hack them down when they start to flower. That's going to release those nitrogen root nodules into the ground to help feed the surrounding plants. Once again, providing that free fertilizer. All right, so the fifth and final edible nitrogen fixing plant that I'm going to be sharing with you today is none other than the gomi berry, known botanically as Eliagnus multiflora. Now this is another new addition to the garden. I'm very excited, looking forward to getting a harvest of berries maybe in a year or two. And uh, it is deciduous, it'll drop its leaves. Unless you're on the upper end of the zone, it may keep uh, some of those leaves as an evergreen. But another berry producing plant that you can eat the berries raw, make jams, fruit leather, juices, smoothies, all the same thing. 
The flowers are beautiful and have a very pungent smell to them. And you can expect these plants to get about six to 10 feet tall and you can prune them back into a hedge or you can keep it more like a shrub, it's up to you. Now, although these are self fertile, it helps to have a couple different plants out here. That's just gonna help with cross pollination and give you a heavier fruit set. This is actually a seedling plant here. And this little thing over here is the sweet scarlet varietal. This is the one I'm looking forward to getting some nice berries from. And as you can see, I got these younger plants caged up with a little chicken wire and some concrete mesh. This is just to help keep the chickens away from scratching around the roots until these plants get better established. Now I've got other nitrogen fixers growing out here as well. Flowers like the lupine flower, which are perennial and put off these beautiful flower heads are also nitrogen fixers. Also the ceanothus is a nitrogen fixer, as well as some of these clovers. Check this out. Got a four leaf clover here. I'll leave it there for now. I've actually still got a bunch of seedlings that I need to transplant out into the garden. More Tulsi basil, it's already going into flower in these cups. I need to get those out. Here I've got some ashwagandha, all these grown from seed right here in my indoor grow room. Got more peppers here. These are sweet bell peppers. Got a bunch of eggplants. These are all merit collards that I grew from seed. And here's some of the chayotes that I grew from cutting from one of my plants that died back last winter. Also got a passion fruit vine that I grew from a cutting.